her uh, prophecy that she had uh, for us for this day is, I am the unspeakable gift for you, says the Lord. I am your all in all. You cannot even begin to comprehend the vastness of my power that I have invested in your life. You do not even know what you have. Little by little you are discovering who I am, not just in words that you have heard or read, but as you experience me for yourself. Yes, taste and see that I am good, but that taste only whets your appetite so that you can press into my presence and discover for yourself what you did not see, did not know, did not understand, did not even realize what always existed and was available to you, says the Lord. Hunger and thirst for me, and you will be filled with my presence and glory that will bring you unspeakable joy, says the Lord. You are not missing anything, but you have not yet realized what I've already given you. There's so much more as you earnestly press into my presence, you will find me and you will receive greater revelation that is inexhaustible and experience the depth of my love and obtain the power of my spirit that will be life changing and fulfilling, says the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Mm -hmm. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. 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 We've already started to talk about just how wonderful God is. How powerful he is. How mindful of everything that is happening in all of his creation. We've given him praise and honor and glory for the great things that he has done and the great things that he will do. We praise him for the things that he's doing with June on the mission. We praise him, we praise him for that. We praise him that just like in the days of Pentecost, just like in the days of Acts, that they are going out onto the street even and into the churches and that they are preaching the gospel, the good news, the good news that our God reigns, that our God is alive, that our Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for all of our healing. He paid the price for our sin. He paid the price so that we would have eternal life in him and through him and that we have a hope and that we have a joy, that we have a peace that goes beyond understanding. As we go through the things that we have to go through, we enjoy that joy, we enjoy that peace, we enjoy what the world doesn't have and the world never will have until they have Christ in them, in, 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 in their heart, until they realize that, that Jesus is the Son of God and has paid the price. And it is a free gift. It's the gift of life, the free gift of life. And we find it so amazing that I remember as a kid, I remember as a kid going to a little, to a little uh, um, vacation Bible thing. And the only reason I went to it was because it was in the middle of nowhere and there really wasn't much entertainment whatsoever for kids. But they had that in this little uh, community hall and uh, we got to do, uh, you know, some games and things like that. We made the little crosses out of the burnt matches and, and made, made that and, you know, they, they told, us, uh, told us stories and things like that. And of course, as a, as a young boy, you know, like, um, I was interested in the fun and the games and the other kids that were there, you know. But at some point they said, uh, it's, there's a free gift and, and it's free, you know. Uh, and all I heard was free, you know. It's free. If you want it, come on up here. If it's free, come on up. So 
I went ahead and, and along with a number of other kids, I went up there to get to get what was free. And what was free was a salvation, it was a salvation message where they asked if I wanted to ask Jesus to come into my heart. And uh, and and they did that. And they did that. Uh, I gotta say I was a little disappointed that there wasn't like a trinket or something like that that was given to me. But oh what a gift, what a gift it is to have the gift of life through our Lord Jesus Christ. To have Christ to come into our heart and take this heart and cleanse it and make it make it righteous. Uh, and what a gift it was. And it was free. Free! I love free. I like uh, the, one of the radio stations uh, used to uh, call up people and if they did something, uh, you know, said to what the station was, they give them a free, give them a free gift. And, and one of the things that they were popular for saying, if it's for free, it's for me. And I kind of like that. If it's for free, it's for me. But I don't know why it is that, that there are so many people out there that could have this free gift of eternal life that they could have this free makeover. You know, they have the makeover for the houses and they have the makeovers where the women go in and they you know, put all the nice things on their face to make them even more beautiful. You know, it's wonderful that they have that. Uh, they have makeovers for cars and whatever. But God offers us a free makeover, a free makeover. He takes us that was dying and makes us over to where we have eternal life. And I don't understand why there's so many people out there that don't want a free makeover. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask him to change you. Some have instantaneous change where life, life is different from night to day. Some have a progressive change where things begin to be better. But from the time you ask the Lord to come into your heart, as we have, from the time you ask him to come into your heart, a change begins in you. A change for the better. Troubles still come troubles still go but we have a god that goes with us through all of it and spares us for many many things i give god the glory and the praise there's so many times that we can talk about those near miss things where there was something that um, a car accident for for instance that uh and like laurel and i experienced uh, uh, last year, I think it was, where uh, one car hit another car and that car started rolling side over side, end over end, and coming directly at us. And I didn't think that there was any way, that there was any way that this thing was not going to roll over top of us. And just before it got there, Laura was able to turn just a little bit, and the vehicle itself took a turn come right here and turn and went off into the field. Never a scratch, never a scratch on it. I give God the glory and the praise and I thank him that we were spared from this thing. Many times we could talk about the things where we have been spared from these things and we know it was beyond a human thing and I'm, I'm in I believe in all my heart that it was a God thing and not just coincidental that we were rescued from these things. I have been in church. I have been in church and outside of church. And I have been prayed for by people who were Christian people who were filled with the Holy Spirit. One time in particular, I was in excruciating pain from from I hurt my back and lifting and 
I had tried, I had tried by resting and that sort of thing to be able to, uh, to just heal up enough to be able to get up and do my job, but I just wasn't able to. Uh, I had a, I had a two-hour trip uh, that I had to go on and a two-hour trip back, and then after that, then I was supposed to go to work. And, uh, on the way back, I, I stopped just before I got home, and I went to a chiropractor, and and because uh, I was in such pain, and and the chiropractor went ahead and did his thing, and I started to feel a little bit better, and then he kept on going, and I felt worse than when I went in, and I was in, in such pain that I couldn't get up and go to my job, uh, and uh, uh, Laurel, it, it was a, a cleaning business, and Laurel and John. Uh, went to do the job without me um, because I just was unable to do that. And they're talking about a 30 mile trip that they had to do. And they got there to the job to realize that I had the keys for the buildings that they were going to have to clean. So they came back, they came back the 30 miles and I just couldn't send them out by themselves again. You know, pain or not, I had to go with them. So. I got up and I went with them and we went to the first job that we that we had for that night. And that was actually a job that you didn't need the keys for, that there was somebody there. It was a dispatch place. It was a, a trucking dispatch office. And we went in there and I went in with them. And I knew that the dispatcher there was a Christian man. We had talked a little here and there about our experience of being a Christian. And I knew he was a Christian man, but I wasn't sure if he believed the same thing that I did. So I asked him, are you spirit filled? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? And he said, yes, I have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I said, would you pray for me explain what the situation was he's a dispatch he's doing business we're in a business and he takes the time to come over and he lays hands on me along with laurel and my son john they lay hands on me and they pray for me and while they're praying for me nobody's pushing shoving doing anything just gently laying hands on me Fine. my hip, whatever it was, just kind of went back in place. It's like, who? Who? Hey. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I was able after that point to continue to do my job in that place and in all the other businesses that we had to do that night. I did vacuum, I did vacuuming, I, I put equipment in and out of the van, I took trash out to the, to the dumpsters and, and went home. Praise God, I know that God healed me because somebody prayed and believed that God would do that. God with all the things, with all the things that are going on in all the world, all the people that are having their trouble, keeping the stars in their place, keeping the earth turning and the gravity gravitizing. <laughs> it's not the right word, but you get the idea that what I'm talking about. With all those, with all those things, Jesus didn't pass me by. Just like on the streets when Jesus walked the earth and, and people called out to him for healing. And he would stop and he would lay hands on them and they would be healed. Just like that, Jesus took time out to heal me that day. The same Jesus that walked the earth that did that is the same Jesus that does these things today. There are so many different testimonies. There's different times when I can speak of where I have been touched. 
and there's people that I know that have testimonies that are even more miraculous than that. This is the God that I serve. This is the God that is involved in my little tiny life and cares about my little tiny situations. This is the God that cares about the most minute things about all of his people, not just me, but all of the people, up to the greatest and the most impossible situations that we can think of. This is the God that lives in my heart. This is the God that says, come on to me. He wants us to come on to him. He wants to give us eternal life. He wants to fill us to overflowing. Free. Free. It's free, people. It's free. Why don't you ask Jesus to come into your heart? and change you from night to day, from dark to light, from sickness to health, from wickedness to holiness. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Is it free? Yes, it's free. If it's for free, it's for me. If it's for free, it's for you. It's for you, just for the asking. We have asked him to come into our heart and change us. And he has changed us. And he has been with us ever since, well, before we ever knew him. Before we knew him, he knew us. He called us. And he's calling people still today. Come and follow me. Come and follow me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The world keeps changing. God is still the same. Jesus said, heal the sick, the blind, the deaf, delivered people from all manners of sickness, delivered people from demons. It's the same God that is still doing the same Jesus, Son of God, that is doing these things even today even today in the things of the world god has a plan for all of these things he has a plan for you and he has a plan for me now the question is you've asked jesus to come into your heart and he has and he's been changing you and he's been equipping you to be able to do things that are beyond your imagination. Those that know me as I grew up as a child and a young man would be shocked and amazed that I'm standing in a church and other churches that they've been able to minister to. That I'm a Christian. That I'm a preacher. I don't know how good, but I'm a preacher. <laughs> I love the Lord, and I love to tell people that I love the Lord. I love to tell people about what God has done in me. The prophecy that we have here God is the unspeakable gift. He is the unspeakable gift. There is so much involved in the gift. We don't even know what we don't even know. There is so much more that we have in God than we have ever scratched the surface of. But, like every gift, that somebody gives you. I go ahead and I give you a gift. Maybe money. You go, oh, thank you. Take the money, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse. I've got money. Well, that's good. 
But until you take that money and take that to the store or put it in the bank so you can write a check or send out a, use your debit card or whatever, until you use that money, that money is absolutely useless to you. That gift is useless to you until you use it. The gift of God that he gives us is useless if we don't use it. We use it, number one, by acknowledging who the gift giver is, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our gift giver. But he expects us to use the gift that he has given us. Faith. We have faith, and he expects us to use our faith. We have joy. He expects us to share our joy. He gives us peace. He expects us to share our peace. All the things that God has given us, he expects us to give freely. He's given and freely we are to give. You take water take a little pond and it's filled with water and it sits there and the sun comes out the heat comes and it beats down on it there's no water coming into it no water going out of it after a while that water just gets stale and after a while even after that, without anything happening, without it being being used, without it being refilled, without it being being poured out, it becomes useless. That's what the gift inside of us is like, I believe. That unless we use the gifts, unless we use the gifts, unless we share what we have in God with others, it gets stale, it gets stale. I know that this message, this, this message is for me. I think it's probably for you and anybody that maybe will wind up seeing a video or maybe won't, but it doesn't matter. For us, this message is for us. God laid it on my heart that we should enjoy the gift and use the gift and most of all that we should share the gift glory to god glory to god